Hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> Just try. <laughs> it's been it's been like a week and a half, maybe two weeks since we streamed. Uh, so let me know how the mic sounds. I'm trying to remove it from my or remove it from my face. I was going back and watching some other ones, and it sounded like I was just like breathing right into it so you let me know does this sound better better option a or option b i think this one probably sounds a little bit better but anyway how's everybody doing hope you guys are having a good night uh so um what we're gonna do today is work on thumbnails something uh, i don't think we do too much on the channel anymore um and this is for jessup king um, we're going to be doing about two hours of this tonight, and then I'm going to be working on uh, something else. Uh, so the stream will be about two hours, give or take. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some, some stuff that's been going on lately, um, and then we'll get into the artwork. Okay, so <laughs> before I get into that, the thumbnail stages, uh, or the thumbnail stage anyway, in my opinion, for comics, is the most um, mentally exhausting and tiring and it's i was about to say the worst but it's the fun it's in my opinion it's what like it could be as subtle as what you can see on the screen right now just super scribbles which what we'll do and you're going to see how, how i kind of put this stuff together um it's something that's not really i don't want to say yeah it's definitely not entertaining um i it might be more so educational um for those of you that like to do comic book work I, I don't think there's too many videos out there of people showing uh, themselves doing thumbnails so hopefully you guys get out of the, or get something out of that um, and then we'll get in there and the reason why I wanted to say this in the beginning is because this this little rambling catch-up that I'm gonna do uh, I apologize but I need to f get that in there right now because as I start going um, oh, you guys say the first one sounds better than this one right now even with the breathing okay we'll move it, we'll move it back up here we'll see how this goes because it's right in my face <laughs> but we'll see how this works um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, so all that being said, uh, so some updates for you guys, uh, what have been, what has been going on? Uh, so the last, I'd say two weeks, uh, there's been, uh, a loss in the family and I'm not going to get into all of that with you guys. Uh, I just wanted to say that's the reason why there hasn't been live streams. Uh, I've been trying to update the channel with previous streams that have already been going on. Uh, but it actually, uh, surprised me, you know, uh, death isn't something that I'm very comfortable with and this was the first uh, I have a very small family on my side and uh, it was interesting it was very eye-opening I think a lot of people uh, for better or for worse you know uh, they experience loss and death uh, earlier in life and it's a coping mechanism that you kind of can get built in with uh, but for me you know like I say I'm 34 so we just had the first open casket and all that stuff I've been to one uh, funeral before that and that was a cremation so it wasn't um, as as eye-opening and as weird and that's the only way I can describe it um, that I went through so you know you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to go in there asking for sympathy and stuff. I just wanted to let you guys know where, where my head's at and where that's been and all that stuff. Just to, you know, kind of keep this open with you guys. Um, so long story short, so that's been going on. Uh, I've been taking a lot of time to kind of deal with that uh, and all that's going on with that. As well as, so we've got Jessup King we're still working on. Um, and then there's another book that I just started working on. Uh, should be soon. I just wrapped up doing the character designs and I shared that with you guys I uh, probably would have been about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, the comic's going to be called, so far anyway, we're still floating around the ideas, uh, but The Astonishers, you know, it sounds superhero-y enough. Uh, so we're, gonna, we're going to be working on that. And the other project that I'm going to be working off stream is, if you guys remember, I worked with a wonderful client named Kyle Simmons. We worked together on Worlds in Peril, which was a Dungeons & Dragons uh, book but for superheroes, so a superhero theme uh, Dungeons and & Dragons, and it's like, I don't know, like 200, 300 pages. Uh, you know, like, if you guys have ever played Dungeons & Dragons, you guys get that really cool monster manual, or the dungeon guide, or whatever the hell they, I forget what they used to be called, Player's Handbook, it might be. Um, it's one of those, and that was such an awesome project to work on. Uh, and then we started working on some cards. Uh, it's like a supplementary card game or something that I don't think it necessarily goes with that game, uh, but it's something else that he's working on. I believe there's going to be a Kickstarter sometime at the end of this year, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, maybe a little bit sooner. And I'll let you guys know for those of you that are interested in that, but what, I've, what I'm what i doing is there's about 19 cards that are left. It's just like an, an addition to that game. So work on that. So my plate's been full, which is great. I, <laughs> I haven't felt this... Um, stressed to be honest uh since working on the standard which has been maybe about two years now 
and uh, you know this whole I actually like this whole week I just haven't even felt like drawing mixed with you know what I said earlier mixed with this uh, and today has been a breath of fresh air which has been great I, I just I noticed that uh, even when I was working on the standard what I would end up doing is you know I work like a full-time job or when I was working on the standard it was like two part-time jobs and what I did is the standard which is like a full-time gig right that's a full-time book uh, so I was working on that and <laughs> For better or for worse, I'm always like, I need more. You know, like I, I need to make sure I've got multiple plates spinning so I've got multiple income coming in because I'm scared. Art, artists everywhere tell people, or a fellow artist anyway, like make as much money as you can whenever you can for the, the dry times, right? So that's so, so embedded in my head that it causes a lot of stress in my life. So I'm, I'm, the reason I'm sharing this is I'm, I'm sure there's some of you guys and girls out there that are experiencing the same thing or you will be experiencing this stuff. So, you know, it, it's good on, on both sides. Uh, but the what, the point I was getting at was what I noticed was when I was working on the standard, taking on all that extra work, the stresses started adding up to the point where there was just so much to start. I didn't know where to start, so I wouldn't start. And then, you know, a day turns into two, three, four, snowballing, and then it just gets worse, right? And that's pretty much what's happening right now. Uh, I know what's going to be coming up with all these projects, so I've kind of been handicapped. I've, I've been holding myself back, just not doing things. So... The, the beautiful part, <laughs> which I'm trying to share with you guys is, uh, and hopefully this helps some of you, is that I was aware of that. And once I become aware of that, then the brain starts working and going, okay, we've been down this road a bajillion times before, what do we do? And the solution for me has always been the same, but because of all this stuff, sometimes it takes the brain or my brain a little bit longer to give back on that answer. It really all it is, is just being aware of your time. That's it. You know, you got X amount of projects. They've all got due dates at some point. Well, that means how many hours a week do you got to put into this stuff? But also maintaining the fact that you have to leave some time to not work, right? So uh, if you guys remember back when I was doing the standard, I'll just bring this over here just so you guys can see this again. Um, and I, or sorry, I was doing this when we were working on Jessup King. And I actually stopped doing this and we're going to be getting back into it uh, because this is a great great tool that's helped me out big time and it helped me help me stay accountable uh, a good example here is I'm trying to hit three pages of Jessup King a week um, so that and, and if you look here okay so maybe some of you guys have no idea what the hell this is so this is a spreadsheet I've made uh, I'm going to make a, a separate video uh, shortly possibly this weekend uh, and share this Google Doc so you guys can download it and you know mess around with it yourself uh, and ideally what this is is you can plug in how long it takes you to do a page. You know, and I'm rounding up, you know, rounding down around there. I'm using, uh, you know, quarters, times of quarters, you know, like 25, 50, 75, and one. And I just plug it in here. Some of you have seen me do this. And what we do, what, well, what happens anyway is if you look up here, let's say we got thumbnails, silhouettes, and roughs, lighting, lettering and writing, line work, and inks, and all that cool stuff, right? But this right here, this average, is as we start plugging in how many hours it's taking us to do like per page, we get an average, right? And then we also get a total. So all of these start averaging and totaling over here. And I know this might not seem very artistic or, or anything like that, maybe more business oriented, but I, I just wanted to share this with you guys because I hope this helps some of you just sort of get a hold of this beast. Or you could just be working on one project. Or maybe you'd like to do a comic, but you also feel like you have to be doing... Um, uh, anatomy study and stuff but you just don't do anything because you don't know what you're supposed to do well this is a great example because it tells you your averages of like time that you're spending on your stuff and you can start to figure out how many hours a week you're actually doing okay so a long story short if you look here the overall this would be per page so per page it's taking five hours now some of these pages like you can look right here right page 10 took three hours to color one hour for inks, we're already at four. This goes well over five hours for that page, but the average is five. So what that tells me is I just need to put in at l around 15 hours a week to be able to hit Jessup King's deadline, which is great, which is phenomenal. You know, like I'm not complaining with about that. So what that means for me is if I want to do that, that means I have to hit two pages a week, or two, sorry, <laughs> two hours a day for seven days, I believe it is, right? So, and I know on the weekends, I usually put in four, maybe six hours on this stuff, but that's great. That's all I needed to know. And, and just by doing this, 
it was like a huge relief off my shoulders because now that I'm keeping track of this, I've also got one for the other two projects I said before. Uh, I can just come in here, plug it in, and we're good to go. And once I figure out my average over like a week of working on this stuff, then you can kind of see, all right, it's all good. You just have to hit it and just make sure you're not <laughs> spinning too many plates. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to move this over here. We're going to get into some drawing now. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Uh, I will, ah, shit. Um, there was one last one. I'm not going to talk long about this. Uh, I just came back from a local comic book convention, Windsor Comic Con, and I wanted to talk about that maybe in a, in a separate video uh, as well. Uh, it, it was a pretty good experience. Got to see some some new people as well. Uh, one, there was actually two people I met that um, for me was huge. Uh, one was Derek Lofman. I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar with him. I hope so. You can check out his stuff on Instagram, especially. He does a lot of the chibi characters. Um, phenomenal guy, really cool guy. I got to sit down and talk with him, so I can show you guys, or I'll share with you guys in that video uh, what we talked about. Another person was, and I always say his last name wrong. Uh, James Rees, I want to say it is. Uh, he goes by the box office artist here on YouTube. And he was unfortunately only there for the one day. But it was really cool catching up with him too. And seeing people in real life is, is always always a treat too. And it's funny because the Windsor Comic Con is such a, a small show that it was, it was awesome. I, I got a kick out of it. Um, so yeah, anyway. Enough uh, running our mouth here. So to show you guys what I'm going to be, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I have off screen here anyway. Uh, let me just show this to you here. And this is what I'm looking at while I do... Uh, actually, let me just catch up with you guys before I, I show you this here. Uh, so, Calvin, my man, how you doing? Uh, Fenar, how you doing, buddy? Uh, uh, personally, I don't mind the breathing. Uh, and shit, I'm sorry for... Hey, don't worry about that, man. It's all good. Thank you, though. Uh, key guy, welcome, man. Hey, how are you? Uh, nice to catch you uh, live once more. Just jumped in. Sounds like you're busy, Mr. Big... Uh, just a whole bunch of projects. I don't want to... It's just a bunch of stuff. It's all good. We're, we're drawn back again. We're all, we're, we're all back in there. Armadillo, how's it going? Or sorry, Armadillo. <laughs> Armando, how you doing? Pillowhead, welcome. LG, welcome, welcome. Okay, so we're doing thumbnails today. Let me just move this over here. Um, so if you guys are familiar with how I work, maybe not. Let's just quickly go over this here. Trello. So, Trello here, this is just going to be a bunch of other stuff, uh, issue one, okay, let's turn this off. So, uh, I have a whole video talking about how I do this, and I'm not going to cover it right now, uh, but this is how I plot out my beats. Uh, some people use other software like uh, Scrivener and things like that, uh, cork boards and stuff, all cool, whatever you need to do. Uh, so for this, this just gets my plots down. Right, so you can see like Jessup taken down, Jessup protects everyone, Jessup wins, and each plot represents a comic page. Okay, so what I do is once I have this, I go into Google, uh, Google uh, Drive, make a, a Google Doc, uh, and the only reason I use this is because it's online, and uh, I can go on my phone on a lunch break if I'm not at a computer, and I can just sort of like hammer in ideas and all that cool stuff, okay? So what I can do here, and this is how sloppy this is, okay? So if you see here for page 42, I just write the page number, 42. P1 means panel one, okay? Hey, Taunting, how's it going, man? Uh, and then I just go, like I just start writing primitive stuff, if anything, or mostly you'll see when, my, when we zoom down how I even break this up even more. This kind of stuff too, I also do after I do this step here, and this is making it sound really complicated. It's really not, but this would be a good example here. I probably should have showed you guys this one first. So uh, page 45, right? So if you look, I wrote the beat down, which was just Jessup protects everyone, right? Which is uh, this panel right, or this page right here, this plot. Uh, and then I just grab a, a little notepad or a little um, uh, index here and I just start or a bullet point and I just start hammering in ideas that I think would be cool. Usually what I do is I'll combine some of these or each one of these will be a panel, right? So as you can see, I just put here Jessup getting up after pile driving a bad guy who is TKO, uh, totally knocked out. Maybe some spinning stars above his head. You know, just ideas as I go. Uh, King Mexiat looming to attack uh, weakened Momo. Jessup plucks a Pokeball, throws it at Mexiat. Mexiat surprised, ball opens, cliffhanger, what's inside. So um, I can tell you right now, these two, I 100% made one panel. 
I didn't need to do all that stuff. Um, so you can see. And then the next step after that, <laughs> which is why I, I probably shouldn't have shown you the first thing when I went in here because this is actually more appropriate. But the next thing I do here, this is when I start to kind of get into like the writing a little bit. Um, now I'll write like panel one. Okay, so panel one. It's Jessup getting up after apologizing. driving. Right here we go. You'll be sitting this one, a big guy. Just relax and enjoy your nap. Uh, so it's just the dialogue that's in there. I've already got what's happening. I just need the dialogue now. Okay, so I know this probably seems super complicated, uh, and, I, and I'm... I'm I hope it doesn't come across as too, too, you know, ridiculous. But what I'm doing is I'm going to put this off screen uh, just so I can show you guys where we're at. So page 53, uh, let's see if we can scroll down just so you can kind of see what's going on. So there's going to be some spoilers and stuff with the story and all that. I'll, I'll try my best to kind of keep it whatever. We're pretty much at the end of the story right now. So, and I'll zoom in too. Pr trust me, you'll be able to, you guys will be able to see this. So uh, page 53, here's an example, right? So I've got four bullet points. Um, so uh, the, the queen, the queen, I can't speak. Queen Tubia, I believe is her name. Uh, she's thanking the heroes. That's the plot, okay? So what I ended up for the beats in, the, in, in, in this page anyway is, uh, what? So basically, I don't know why the hell I wrote this. She's saying thanks uh, thanks to your friends, and she never thought she'd see the day when she would see a war machine ever again. Uh, and then she says, especially after you murdered so many of my people, how dare you come back here? How dare you? And then Jessup goes to her, like, my deepest apologies. It is by chance. So the plot kind of, like, really ironing out here. Uh, what I've done, though, is I added an extra panel because I was, I was reading this, and I'm like, you know, like it's cool that she's yelling at him, but I think it would be even cooler if maybe she slaps him and he takes it. You know, it's her way of giving back aggression. And it, that's the, for me anyway, what's really cool about working like this is that every step of the way, I get to add some stuff. Nothing is ever final, all the way up to when we start putting down, like, it's done once we get into coloring, to be honest. Once, or inking. Once I get to inking, it's pretty much everything's finished, you know. So, dialogue and stuff, but the cost... <laughs> To be honest, the cost that comes from working, or that does come from working like this, uh, is the fact that I don't get a chance to have really cool dialogue <laughs> or really cool beats and stuff that sort of play play themselves out here. Okay, so so you can see, like, look how like cheese this is, right? So this first panel here, uh, thanks to your friends, never saw I'd see the day. And what they're doing right here is Jessup's basically he uh, broke her free out of the cage that she was in. And then here, and then she's pointing at Jessup, who's kneeling down, uh, especially after you murdered so many of my people. And then here, she's going to be screaming. I'm not sure if I like this. Let's, let's actually fix this one. I want to show her, like, crying, you know? Like, she's she's very broken up about this. Uh, so here, she's like, how dare you come back here? How dare you, right? So I want this to be very... I'm trying to picture the beats as we go. So we're zoomed out. We're zooming in. We got an extreme close-up. So maybe we can have, like, a... Like, I mean, go real. Because the, the thing with this one is that I want to show her, like, like she's in some serious loss. And, and, and I want to also have this reflect, like, Jessup did some, some really non-heroic stuff, you know, to rescue somebody. Uh, but then instead of them saying thank you when you rescue them, they're crying. Like, that's, I'm hoping, you know, that that gives it a little bit of, Just real big here. Get some speed lines in there. Whoops. Uh, let me just get my timer going. It's been so long since I've... Uh, <laughs> to do this timer stuff. Okay. Okay, so she's there, and then we're gonna get a panel here where we where she slaps him. So I'm thinking, just zoom in a little bit. So we need to guide the eye across here, right? So I, I've already got like a a flow. Let's just make a new layer here. Sometimes I'll add this stuff here. Uh, so we're kind of going this way. She's pointing. So we need to somehow do something like this. But he's kneeling down, so 
And I was trying to think of this too. There's a panel where, or a page where uh, Jessup gets punched, right, by that big dude. If you guys are reading the comic right now, you guys know that. Um, and his head does move, you know, but the guy says a little comment like, "Oh, you're made of metal, are you?" Right. So I figured, like, she's gonna, if she's gonna slap him, wouldn't that really hurt her? But I'm hoping maybe people won't read into it too much. All right. So how do we show? What's the angle we're gonna have? The most important part is the slap. And then down here, he says. Uh, my deepest apologies. Uh, I cannot even. I cannot get forgiveness for what I've done. But now the dark is over. It's still my freedom. Uh, but I said I feared. Okay, so. so. I'm thinking maybe we can have her. Maybe we'll start down here. This way her hand, maybe like her body language is kind of pointing off screen, off screen, off panel. <laughs> uh, and we'll figure out this here. I can already see in my head like this angle that I want. I still want Jessup to like, I want you to feel sad for him. You know what I might do? I'm going to do this because I really want to show the eyes of Jessup being very mournful of like, like being genuine that, that what he did was wrong and he knows he's wrong, right? So let's go like here. Uh, because I just had an idea here. So in this panel up here, I still want Jessup. He's hunched over. Or he's kneeling down, I should say, sorry. And what I think would be kind of cool is if we kind of have his mouth, you know, like he's wiping away blood or something, like she slapped him that hard, even though <laughs> it wouldn't actually do anything. I think it might be a cool storytelling thing to show him, like, uh, what's the word I want to use here? Like giving into a human emotion, do you know what I'm saying? Um, and if we show that, maybe it just show, helps show his humility in this spot, if, if that makes sense. Let me just put a little, uh, Kelvin, I have a question. Yeah, no, no, go ahead, guys. You guys got questions. Go ahead, fire them out. Make him look like he bled. And then here we can put... Actually, you know what might be cool? Is the way that we can mirror this is maybe robots cry, or machines cry. Maybe Jessup cries. Yeah, make them make them soft a little bit here. Maybe he says something here too. But to figure out where we're gonna put the speech bubble, I could see like a lot of shadow here too, a little bit of tears. Tears. Okay. So, as you can see, what I'm trying to do, anyway, is sometimes you can't figure out the pacing and stuff of the story uh, in all the panels. What I like to do is have, like, an idea. As you can see, we put the red gesture in there. I'm trying to get things to move in that direction. Don't always have to do this. Sometimes it just happens inherently. Uh, but I like to do that and sort of, like, build the pieces around the panels that are giving me a little bit of trouble. So, like, this panel right here, I've given it a lot of room, is when she slaps them, right? But you can see he's down here. So if we think of it this way, just to go, some, some of you guys have seen me do this before. Some of you guys, you guys are new to this. Uh, so in film, anyway, I forget what this is called. Um, but this is like, if these are cameras, this is like where you can film. And you can't film over here. It's weird uh, when you break this. It's almost like a stage. Uh, and you'll see a lot of films do this, right? So sometimes with these kinds of complicated action scenes, I try to figure out where the hell we're, we're shooting from, right? So I can see this line is here. So this first panel is actually perfect. So she's here, Jessup's here, right? So if she slaps him, Trying to, what I'm trying to think of, sorry, like, this is going to be a lot of rambling, you guys, and hopefully, this is why I hope you guys have some good, uh, <laughs> you guys are, uh, got your, 
your notepads or whatever out because this is like I say a lot of rambling a lot of trying to figure this out talking it out um, the, the, honestly the, the most work in comics is, is this right here uh, I'll answer your question one second there my man I just want to try to figure this one out while I'm here so she's there comes in I think maybe what we'll do is this right here might work a little better no, she's on the left. I gotta have the eye there. Okay. So, slap. Do I have Jess up in the foreground here getting slapped this way? That. And have her to follow through. I can have the other characters back here, like, surprised. Jess up just like. Psh. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Okay. Let's try to figure this out. And we're not worrying about perfect anatomy here, right? It's just relaying the information here. That stuff comes during the roughs. So maybe we can put like his mustache this way. Some sort of sound effect. And then we can get like this blur line. See, and we can also use this as like that line of action. This thing, if we get rid of it, it'll bring us down there. I'll have to play around a little, little bit of the dynamics of this. And by dynamics, I mean the dynamic uh, shot choice. Like right now, it's a lot of this stuff can tend to be very flat, um, which is good and bad at the same time. Just be aware of how much flatness, in my opinion, you got going on. You might want to start moving like... Um, your camera up or below like a, a bird's eye or a worm's eye uh, but for thumbnails I sometimes find that doing this stuff sort of like breaks a lot of this out so uh, maybe we'll have you know what here let's do this let's have uh, Tupo and the Doblin here and we'll put Momo kind of like holding them back Okay, um, oh, gl uh, good to hear that, Pillowhead, I'm glad, man. Uh, Calvin, uh, it's about coloring, I have gotten as far as the flatting stage, after that, not sure what to do, don't know what tool or how to, how to blend colors, uh, okay, so I guess the question I would ask you, man, is do you know the style of coloring you want for your comic? Because that's going to play a huge role in, in not what I'm just about to, t what I'm about to tell you, but it's going to play a, a big role in everything going forward here. Uh, why I say that is like with Jessup, I, I cell shade it. Um, you might want more of like a cut and grad. So like what what's currently out there for comic books. Uh, you might want like a painterly look. All of those are different. And uh, yeah, so you let me know and I'll, and I'll try, to, try to help you out here. Okay, so panel or page 54. So uh, the queen thanks everyone. Oh, and by the way, it's funny. I'm looking at these plots, and there was a time when these um, uh, tupos, you know, the cute little teddy bear kind of characters, they were crabs. So I'm looking here. Like, queen crab thanks the heroes, especially Jessup. Machine or not, your eyes do not lie. Okay, cool. So I guess that worked out. So she says, machine or not, your eyes do not lie. Some tupos show up happy. We are free. Momo hands the queen back of the scepter. This belongs to you. Just a patting random two on the head. You need to worry about your head. Okay, I just want to make sure that uh, I have the part where she gets her crown back. Okay, cool. It is showing up. All right, so we got a brand new page here. So this is what I like to do when I start up. So uh, I'm going to read this a couple times, and I try to pick what I think is the most important part here, okay? So... Um, so she says, your eyes don't lie. Some Tupo show up happy. We are free. I think that might be uh, kind of cool. 
we can have a shot where there's a bunch of free two pose running around. Uh, Momo uh, hands the queen back to Scepter. This belongs to you. Just a pattern we have to do, but we didn't worry about your highest stones. Uh, Okay, so if all of them are going to show up, I'm going to need a, a, like a, a wide shot for that. Just everybody showing up. Um, and that is panel two. So. I'll have to be more than like half the page. Um, yeah, I got an idea what we could do here. That's a nice little tight shot there. Momo hands the queen back her scepter. This belongs to you. This one we could probably just split right down the middle. This one's just a very plain Jane kind of kind of page. So this one, what I wanted to do is a carry over from panel one, two, three, four, five of fifty-three, where but we're gonna we're gonna come in a little tighter and maybe now she's showing some compassion to Jessup. Maybe has her her hand on his head. Your eyes don't lie, you know. Actually, maybe he can put his hands on her. And then here, uh, so forearms coming into the eyes, the eyes, we can come down. Alright, so I'm going to pull the camera back quite a bit here. Now that Jessup's gotten up. Queen, Momo, the other two people, and there's like this pit that's over here that she was dangling from. Maybe put a bunch of like two bows. I can already tell by looking at this one, this will be a little bit longer of a panel. Or not longer panel, like page to draw. Just with something like this, right? Uh, maybe in the foreground here we'll put that, that house, I think that's there. Just to help frame it as well. And I'm not sure, there might be something here. Pretty sure this is the thing that was holding her up. But if you notice what I'm doing is I'm sort of tilting them a little bit, so everything's kind of funneling down, like everything's pointing down towards here, you know? So even the curve is kind of coming here, and I'm putting on a little bit of a slant, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, no, I don't know. I guess cell shading. I have seen that, and I liked it. Okay, well, um, if I can show you how I cell shade, if that helps you, uh, once you've got your flats and stuff. It's very simple, but I, I would urge you, there's two things here. One look around and find the thing the color style that okay there's like some questions that come into this I don't mean to make this sound longer than it really needs to be but this is what I'm trying to get at is if you're the one doing the coloring you know your ability right you know how well and how bad you can color saying that there's certain styles that you can be drawn to that you would like to color in or and or you can look at your comic and go like I would love if this was colored this way right so you're stuck with two two situations here one if there's a style that you can color in that you think is the best for the comic you know best is subjective and you can do it and it fits within your timeline and deadlines and stuff like that do that okay on the other side 
uh, you might have to spend money and pay for colors to get that vision that you want. Okay. Uh, personally, I don't want to dump a whole bunch of money in Jessup when I can do a lot of the legwork currently. So I color it in the cell shading because I can do it and it's quick. And I'm learning to get better with it in, uh, in time as well. But you are right. There are lots of comics that do cell shading because of that. It's quicker and not like most people can do it. Most people can do it. Okay. There's certain things like when you start getting into backgrounds and skies and stuff like that that get a little bit, uh, a little wacky. Um, but I'll just show you really quickly like how, how I color this stuff. Right. So let's just open this page. I think I have a video or two on this. Let me just turn down all this stuff here. Uh, and we'll look at panel one. Okay, so panel one, this is the flats right here, okay? Now, the sh all I do is I add a layer here, and we're just gonna put it on normal, with like this purplish. Now, now, the reason why I go purple, I don't want people to just go purple. Like, purple works. <laughs> purple usually always works, to be honest with you, okay? But I wanna show you the, my, my thought process for that. So, if I eyedropper this, the reason is because, at this point in the story, anyway, the sky is around like a greenish yellow, right? So, uh, if you were to go outside in the daylight on Earth, um, when the sun's out, the sun's yellow, okay? It comes from a blue atmosphere, okay, all that cool stuff, but the sun's like a yellow. Well, the sun is yellow, it's not like a yellow, it's yellow. So usually, you just go the opposite, and that'll be the, the shadow color, okay? Um, and you can notice I'm going pretty desaturated, okay? So just to show you, this is kind of like where you, your light source should be kind of be around so if it was blue like this once you hit multiply it just like harmonizes the color so this looks fine this is fine but what you can do is I, I think this is called split complementary whereas instead of you just go directly across you can either go here or go here right so do you want the shadow to be even cooler or do you want it to be warmer it's going towards the reds and that's kind of where I'm at with this one right here okay so we're going here this right here is honestly what you'll see like a lot of people just color with because it just it looks so good it feels it feels nice looking at this right so this would be a blue and all this stuff so Let's just say, here, let me go down to this, uh, whoops, let's go down to, I got a whole bunch of layers there. All right, so we'll say with these guys, right, let's look at the, the color we've got. So this bright green, let's say it's back here, right? Let's say there's their sun or the main driving light source in this page was like a cool color, this coolish blue or whatever. You just go opposite, so you could even go right here, maybe I want to make it opposite so I want to make it go warmer because the the color is or the, the the light source is cool okay so we're gonna go in here uh, and I'm just going to fill that in and just hit multiply and it looks like that which looks whoops no I think that's wrong there we go so it looks like that and if we go and we're going to apply that to the background is that the shadow there yep so add it there. There you go. So it feels a little bit more warm. Do you notice that? Just because of the shadows, the shadow color. If you compare this with the, the panel below, see like it's the same, except up here I, I went with a warm shadow. So it feels, maybe you guys can't see it. I, like I can see it because I've been doing this for a bit. But this is like warm. Down here is cool just because it's going into the purples and stuff. Okay. Now, the last thing, and I mean you could just walk away with it and go there. Um, or I'll walk away and, and just be done with it right there. Uh, what I do is like my last step to this whole thing, and this is my secret sauce. You don't have to do this. I just like doing it myself. So you get all this here. I add a color balance layer. All right, now do you see all of a sudden it looks kind of interesting? I'm gonna show you what this looks like when we open it, okay? So the color balance, here actually, let, let's do this new, okay? So I'm above everything, even the inks. I'm gonna go layer, new correction layer. Color balance. Uh, let me just pause my timer here. Um, and the reason I use color balance, I forget which tutorial I saw that talked about this, was this is another way to harmonize your colors, right? So if we're using a multiply layer to uh, add shading to our flats, this works well too because it, it works with everything. Like that purple we're using, there's a reason for that purple, right? So this sort of like brings everything in tone with, with everything else here. So what I normally do is I start, to, I start off with the shadows. So in this case, these shadows here, um, let me just use what we had, right? So we went into the purples and stuff, right? So I would go into like a little bit of the blue maybe, you know, and you can see how it quickly changes it. Uh, maybe a little bit of the cyan, just get a little bit of light blue in there, right? And then the highlight, I go opposite. So what's opposite of blue? Yellow. And what's opposite of cyan? Red. Right? And you can play with these and, and, and you know, move around. Half tone I really don't mess around with, but you totally could, like, you know, this right here, Honestly, guys, when you guys are looking at colorists, 
like I don't care if they're working in Marvel DC or anything like that they're all using color balance because of what you can just see right here just the difference in what it does so for me I have it um, just to show you guys here so if I go to the shadow you can see I wanted the blue and the highlight I think is going into the green because I wanted this to feel swampish like it's a uh, evil like an evil lair there's bad guys here right whereas when we look at page one just so you guys can see the difference uh, and you can copy these color balances from uh, a file to another one so you can have a consistent file right so here it's all bright and cheery like let's look at the color balance here so the shadows a little bit into the red and the highlights went into the yellow right? look at this the two are much different one feels like nighttime kinda and then this one feels like daytime right nighttime-ish bad guy-ish good guys warm colors right so the the comic is actually going to start shifting more back into this as we end and end, end this uh this issue here okay so that's how i do it um i do believe i've got some videos i've got a whole bunch of videos on here you can check out i don't want to push you towards um patreon i really don't however if you want a little bit more in depth uh for three bucks you can cancel it after the first month if you want uh, I've got a whole bunch of art or comic book kind of making tutorials. I have a How I Color Jessup King video up there as well, if you're interested, okay? I hope that helps you, man. Uh, Key Guy, by the way, this is awesome to see, John. Don't think I've ever seen you do this part of your process. Is always... Uh... Oh, hey, yeah. I, I try to keep some of this behind the scenes because it's, like it's telling the story before the pages are even done, right? So I'm just starting to say fuck it. <laughs> Share with you guys everything here. Hey, thanks, Raphael. Welcome, man. Welcome. Okay, so let's start this timer back up, and let's get back into it. So, uh, all right, where did we leave off? Well, I should say, too, uh, normally what I do, like, let's say with the new, the, the Astonishers comic that I'll be working on, I'm going to get, like, a 22 to 24-page uh, script, and the way we're working on it is very similar to how I sh showed you guys. Um, uh, the writer, James C. Hardy, or no, not James... Regardless, the, the writer, he plotted it out, and right now we're just going like, I asked him, can you tell me what's on each page? Like, what's supposed to happen on each page? Not each panel, just what happens on each page. And then what I do is I go through the entire script, I read it once or twice, three times maybe, get the idea in my head, and then I try my best to get all the thumbnails done in one day or two days. That way I'm, I'm, I'm still in there working on it, working on it, working on it. I don't give myself time to uh, forget about it. Um, so with Jessup, though, it's a little different. I'm working in the three pages, okay? So uh, the only reason I wanted to say that, and I apologize, I'm rambling like, a, like an asshole here. I just wanted to say that because I know some of you guys and girls, you guys aren't doing what I'm doing. You guys might be working on full 22-page books and stuff, okay? So it is, it's a little bit different, um, but it, it definitely still works the way it does. Okay, so she's here saying, look in your eyes. All the Tupos show up. Momo hands uh, the queen back her scepter. Around in here. best part about Momo to be honest with you guys <laughs> is because of the tentacles I'm able to uh, use them as like arrows like pointing where you should look All right like that one might be a little too much but okay thanks I'm learning to draw in colors I use YouTube sometimes but I don't always understand how the artists do what they do so the Patreon, I definitely want to get. It. Hey, no problem, my man. If it help, like, I, if if you were to check it out and it doesn't help you, you can send me a message too, uh, and I can try to answer your questions. It's tough, right? Like, I don't know what stage of art you're at right now, right? So trying to learn a bunch of these things, they're like complex stuff, especially if you're um um. Maybe I'll throw this out there. If you guys are comic book artists or you want to make your own comic book, like a web comic, or you want to make something like I'm making with Jessup King, but you're I'll just be blunt right now. For me, I know I'm very good and confident with my 
uh, comic book and drawing skills. I, I could, of course, like everybody, get better. 100%, okay? I'm confident in being able to tell a comic book story. I'm also confident in coloring. I At my day job, that's pretty much all I do is color, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I'm going to get way better because I have a long way to go still. But the, the what I'm able to do right now, I'm confident. I'm confident in sitting down and I know I can turn this page that we're doing right now into an, a good finished comic book page. I know that. If you guys and girls, if you, if you think or you feel anyway that your art still needs to get better, your panels, your, your coloring, all these things need to get better, like you don't even feel confident in it, you don't feel confident that if you sat down this weekend to do one single comic book page that you would be you would turn out a good comic page it doesn't have to be great but a good competent comic book page then if you're working on your own thing pull back don't start throwing color and stuff into your pages work on just the storytelling if the color helps the storytelling then consider it but you can do so many black and white comics or grayscale comics or or just black and white with no scale or grayscale at all and you're going to grow that way just don't put too much pressure on yourself to like learn everything <laughs> in comics it it's a very hard task to do okay and like actually you know what this kind of relates to how i started the stream if you start adding too much of this stuff you're going to get stressed out and then you're going to think my god how do i even start don't do that okay so just build until you're confident and then add build until you're confident then add that that's what i would recommend so i would recommend okay um just a patting a random tube on the head you need to worry about that your highness though so, okay so i think what we can do here is one of those like jesus <laughs> kinds of uh Panels, meaning, uh, where it's like everybody's kind of standing around Jessup. This page is gonna be a bitch to draw too. Hey, Jojo. Side, okay. <clears throat> I'll just insinuate where the uh, perspective is here. It's like a house here, it's a cliff. Cool. Um, nobody's asked this yet but I should I should also point out this is like the longest rambly video ever I'm sorry this is like the, the most realist uh, stream you guys probably have in a while um, I recommend also doing like one to three versions of a page of thumbnails depending on your deadline okay so uh, what I would do is like this page here I would redo it but change different angles rarely the first time you do something you get the best okay it's not until you spend some time with it uh, for me, I, I'm very deadline driven right now, so I don't have that luxury. I'm, I haven't given myself that luxury, even though it's my own thing. I would recommend you guys do that. Uh, and then the third one is you kind of like take bits and pieces from each thumbnail to make a page uh, in case, you know, you know, you like one over the other kind of thing. Raphael, hey John, how uh, was your writing process for Jessup? Uh, I kind of talked about it a little earlier. Um, let me just pull this back up and I'll show you I'll try to go over this super quick bud sorry I do have videos talking about how I write uh, comics I, I think or how I write Jessup um, so you can check that out as well all right so it usually looks something like this here okay uh, so I go in Trello here uh, because I can quickly make like little notes and stuff uh, and I color code them so green means it's actually part of the story right uh, red means action, blue means rest on a moment, so it could be like just showing birds flying by, uh, a tree growing, or grass blowing in the wind kind of thing. Uh, yellow is plots from cards, so this is, sorry, yellow is like the main, the main plot, okay? Story is like people talking, 
people running their mouth. And then B story is like the other thing that happened. So if your story is Superman uh, saving or stopping bad guys from stealing money from a bank, cool. What's the B story? Well, the B story could be something that's unrelated, uh, but somehow is related in, in, some, in some context. So it could be um, an old lady having a picnic with her grandson at the park. So what you do is when you're writing, the, the story is, you know, Batman, or sorry, Superman saving the money from the, uh, the bank. And the B story, again, is the old lady. So the old lady could be in a park across the street or something. But you also have a page or two in there showing like them going to the park. and Like it's something else that's happening. Think of like a TV show that you've watched. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of an example here on the fly. I, I, do you guys understand what I'm saying? I hope you do. It, basically, it's, it's the other thing that's happening kind of in tandem with the story that doesn't necessarily affect the plot all the time but it can uh and usually it's in there to help push the 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 um oh geez what am i trying to say it's to push the the theme or whatever it is so if stealing is wrong as your theme then you know the grandmother could literally be talking to the little boy about you know i saw in the news today some people were stealing and that stealing is bad you know like you can go real blunt but the action in the plot is still superman defending the bank kind of thing okay so that's what b <laughs> b story is didn't mean to get it that long uh so what i do is um i do three note cards or uh what the hell sorry i'm all over the place with you guys here let's here i'll show you so what i do is uh i do three note cards beginning middle and end of the main story here okay so the beginning is batman or superman uh, it doesn't matter i just told you the story here uh and then after this this was three beats here this could be three pages ten pages where this is what happens uh then from here i make beginning middle and end note cards for each one of these right now we're up to nine cards Sometimes I'll just leave it there. Uh, most times I'll add another three to these ones. Um, and this really breaks it down into slowing it down and giving you plots for, for many pages, okay? Uh, so from here, usually I'll start with just like these three or these nine right here. Uh, just because these stories are pretty short, they're not graphic novels, right? They're pretty short. So sometimes even just three note cards is fine. Then I'll plug them in here uh, and then I just start adding more note cards in between it. So more plot to sort of like iron it out. So an example might be like, what if we have a fight scene that's five pages? Well, I'll just put like uh, Jessup fights, Jessup fights, Jessup fights five times. So let me see if there's, yeah, here you go, right here. Jessup fights big guy, Jessup fights big guy. That means for two pages, it's a fights, it's a fight scene, right? Um, I'm not worried about it right now. I just know that I get two pages of a fight. I'm going to worry about it when I get down to uh, plotting. So this is kind of like the plots right here that we do. So I just write it in here, right? Like uh, right now we're working on this one right here, where the queen thanks the heroes. That's all that plot is. So like, let's, here, I'll show you where that is. Uh, oh, here, you can see we're almost done the comic here, right? Right here. Queen thanks heroes. There's two pages of her thanking the heroes and stuff. So when I came in here, just right there, queen thanks the heroes. And then queen, what I decided to do is add a little bit more of a backstory between the two, okay? So right here, the, thanks them. And then what do I, in my mind, when I do this, I just put like little um, uh, bullet points and I just write, what would be cool to be in there and then I sort of turn those into panels so this one sometimes like here here I think these all deserve to be a panel on their own so it's four panels sometimes I'll combine them and stuff and then the writing <laughs> the writing I do uh, while I'm doing the thumbnails and or after the thumbnails are done and I have to put text on the page oh no hey don't worry about it no, I just wanted to Trust me, I get this question a whole bunch of times, and I, and I know why. It's, it's a legit question. But I hope that helped anyway. Okay. Sorry, man. Okay, cool. Uh, so this page, page 55. All right, let me just read this one off off here. A little bit difficult for you guys to with me today.
So this one is a lot of talking, three pages. Okay, so what I think I'll do for the three pages of Yip Yap, maybe I will just, we'll just break it down. So the second page panel's got a lot more people running their mouth. What I might do here, is, okay, so <laughs> sometimes you get a page like this and you're like, oh, it's just three panels, sweet, easy day, right? Get easy job, just kind of go in here and just plug it in. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do though, is sometimes you can just like add a panel. Okay, we're gonna close up on an eye or a face, right? And there's no words that are there, but it kind of gives you that little bit of emotion, right? So like right here would be a good example. So I think we'll go here. And then we'll show Momo. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. All these pages are, I'm just realizing, all these pages are going to suck to draw. There's like <laughs> an army of these fur balls everywhere. And they all can't just disappear. You know what I might do? They might, nah, I was going to say, maybe they'll start scattering away. They've already said, hey, yay, and they, they've all kind of hung around. Maybe now they'll just start walking away so I don't have to keep drawing them. She's on the right. Yeah, this is right. Actually, you know what? Maybe yeah, this is this is great. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna have all these people leaving. They're all gonna be leaving. I know there's something coming up. Uh, somebody gives Momo her crown back. So we can have kind of like Momo flying away maybe. I was thinking of a, of a darker time, so maybe we can do a...
Hey James. Okay, so that's why I'm taking the drain yourself and it's gonna look like it's a touch to your face. This one might have to be reworked. I don't know if they'll all fit on there. Okay, so another one down. 55, what do we want now? 56. Okay. I'm not always happy as a two-book cousin. Yeah, might be enough there. Okay, so here they get a. Okay, so a little spoiler for the story here for you guys. Um, so when they crash landed on this uh, planet, they ran out of fuel, so they're looking for fuel diamonds. Uh, and if you guys remember earlier in the in the comic, uh, all the Tupos were slaves, and they were um, digging up uh, Capricorn crystals, are called. Uh, so they're like these blue crystals or whatever. Uh, and Mexiat, he tells you a little bit of like who hired them to get that stuff, right? Um, so here, uh, Momo is telling Jessup, okay, cool, we saved the day. Let's go back. Let's, you know, we're going to have to find some of those fuel diamonds so we can go back home kind of thing. And as a reward, um, the queen gives them a Capricorn crystal, which is basically endless fuel. Um, so, you know, it's a huge thing that they're going to get there for that. So, I need to know um, which ones. Uh, and then Jessup kisses her on the head. So, we'll go here.
Actually, you know what would be cool? If she gives them the heart that's on her scepter. Maybe that was a Capricorn crystal. Just cruising through these ones, eh? Fifty-seven. There's only two pages left. Okay, cool. Uh, so we also get as a celebration of when they leave, the queen sets off some fireworks. So all this to say that Momo got to see her fireworks. Uh, make it a crystal that is similar to hers, but a different shape to symbolize that they are now family or something. Hmm, I like that. Um, I think that's a good idea. The reason I'm, I'm running with... Anyway, so far, I might change it once we get there, is if that's, the scepter is a symbol of a lot of things, um, it's not that it's a special Capricorn or crystal, I suppose, uh, but it's that gesture of, you know, you gave here's this thing that's not super generic. It's pretty important to us. Um, she can always replace it, I would imagine. Hey, Calvin. So, John, when did you start? Uh, like, like drawing. Period. Let's just say I drew for a long time, but it was like whatever he would draw. I would just copy everybody else's art. Um, the only time I got serious was around maybe the end of high school college so grade 12 going into college for animation uh, I was taking some freelance comic book work but it wasn't really anything special uh, then that first year of college when I was in animation and I met that Marvel artist uh, that's when everything took off so I'd say probably around 2002 2002 is probably when I started getting like really serious about it Uh, James, that way it's not like she's getting ripped off of her. No, I, <laughs> I totally get that. The way the angle I'm coming at is if she gives him that, it's it's a gesture because he saved he saved them all uh, from slavery, right? Even though there's some 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 darker history there, he he liberated the people, right? So as a gesture, it's here. You take our thing. It, it, she's willingly giving it. It's not the the crystals are talked about a little bit earlier too. So it's not like that's the only one. But I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, okay, so Jessup and Momo wave as they enter their ship. Fireworks pop off in the distance in celebration. Okay, 
so Jessup is So we're going to go here. Jessup's putting the fuel in the ship. Uh, one more look, Seth. What's wrong? Let's open up, where was this one? Alright, so we're back here. I think it might be cool to, <laughs> I don't say swipe a panel here, but swipe a panel. Uh, so what is this one? Just putting a crystal in the fuel port. is out a bit zoom out here so we can show where the hell they are. Might be cool to show those, uh, what were they? the tabits again? Just in one little spot. Let me get them where they are right here. Okay, so.
right, so they're hugging now. Best friends. Worst fireworks ever. Look at this. Uh, question. I have been offered a board game card game gig, a science fiction. I'm wondering, creative brain muscle wise, how would you go about getting alien concepts? The silhouette method? Uh, yeah, yes and no. <laughs> Silhouettes, I think, will definitely help no matter what. Uh, you'll get some organic shapes that are just, you know, I don't think you would normally get out of just drawing regular style, you know? Uh, that being said, what I would recommend doing is downloading uh i don't want to say get just I, what i use for reference anyway is a piece of software called pure ref p-u-r-e pure 
and then ref, like reference, R-E-F. Uh, you can pay whatever you want for the software. You can pay zero if you want. Uh, and what you're able to do is just go on Google, type in like aliens, anywhere you want to go. And you can just click and drag images into this thing and just fill it up with aliens and, and that kind of stuff that gets you excited. Uh, and then that way you have sort of, I don't want to say a style guide, but you have a, a, like a direction to kind of go um, and then start doing some silhouette stuff for sure. Not that you're copying what you saw, but it can help. Because uh, like, I don't know about you guys, but let's look at this, okay? Let's say I'm, I have to design aliens, okay? Check out my screen. Doesn't this just scream design something that doesn't exist? A big blank white paint? Like, it's this is the, this sucks <laughs> to try to just do any kind of character or creature design. Uh, so any kind of reference you have to look at at least is an idea. You know, like it's a map, kind of. Uh, and then you can start going out there. But that, that's what I recommend, man. And congratulations too, yeah, good job. I hope it's uh, not only just a learning experience, but I hope you, you gain a lot out of it, man. Okay, so let me just stop the timer here. So that was like an hour for all that, really? Hmm. Uh, let's see here, what pages did we do? We did 53, so 53 to 58. So 53, we'll put 0.5, 0.5, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely check out Sketchgrass videos too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a whole bunch of pages set up here. Close that. All right. Uh, so if we go to breakdowns, I don't know which page we're at. 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a brand new pa paper, <laughs> a brand new page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through each of these thumbnails since we're we're done the whole comic, well thumbnails wise anyway, uh, and just get all these ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna be going to merge layers here. Does Momo lay eggs? Uh, I don't know. I never thought about that. Should she lay eggs? So that's page 51. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to go through all of these. And, and this is how, like, if uh, I was doing this on, on paper or something, I would just fill these out and then bring them in here and then just transform it. You can be pretty sloppy with it. Like, these still need to be roughed out, right? These thumbnails are, as you can tell, they're just a spot to go from here and this goes pretty quick and I know most of you probably don't work this way you guys probably work with like if you're using clip studio with the story feature uh, so this might not make sense for you to do you might have your own little system 
Yes, she should lay eggs. <laughs> well, maybe they don't. Maybe they don't rep reproduce like that. Maybe maybe something else. I don't know. I I, I don't think there's going to be anything in the story that has to do with <laughs> her getting pregnant or having eggs and stuff. Just like Jessup reproducing. I don't think we're going to have we talked much about that. So that's the last one. All right, see you, James. Thanks for popping in, man. Okay, so the next thing here to do is to get the panels all set up. So we'll start here. All right, so I usually just lower the opacity down so I can still see my guides. Uh, I think I'm gonna have this panel here totally open. So let's go ahead, grab our panel cutter tool. Where's that at? Jessup webcomic, okay.
we'll save it up. That's pretty much it. I mean, <laughs> uh, I won't bore you guys with doing this over and over again, but uh, that's pretty much the thumbnail process. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, got something out of it. Uh, please, if you're watching the YouTube version, uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, I listen to this stuff and read it all, all the time, and I reply when I can. I'd be very interested to uh, know if this is how you guys work, or if you know something even better than what I'm doing that you can you know, uh, speed my process along. I would love to hear that too. Uh, and lastly, I just want to say thank you once again to everybody that's on Patreon uh, supporting me over there. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you are not on Patreon, regardless, thank you for your attention and uh, checking my stuff out and sharing it and all that cool stuff. I really do appreciate all of that. Uh, finally, uh, there's some links at the bottom of the screen. You guys can see there as well. If you wanted to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Patreon, again, I don't mean to keep bringing that up. Uh, there's links to all that stuff as well below. Um, and lastly, last thing I'll bring up is there should be a link in the comment section, or not the comment, the description box as well. Uh, I have set up a mailing list. So if you guys are interested in receiving emails from time to time, I won't spam you guys, uh, from time to time, just letting you know what's new on my plate, uh, as well as like conventions that I might be going to, uh, and all that cool stuff, please uh, consider checking that out as well. And um, yeah, so I should be streaming this weekend i don't know if there's anything else going on this week uh but if there is i'll see you guys there as well and until next time you guys keep reading comics keep making comics and i'll talk to you soon Bye bye